grab it. It flows, it undulates, it wiggles, it floats. Mmm, there's about a thousand ways you can use it. Today, we dip our toe in the realm of possibilities and use it four ways. Can you tell I like rabbit? Cases and cases of the stuff because it's just so darn awesome. One of my favorite jig tying lure building materials out there. I got plans for this stuff for future projects, but today we are diving into three different lure builds, one right after the other, and we're only going to use rabbit, of course the hook, and some thread just to show you how versatile this material is. As you saw, I've got cases of the stuff. You can go to Barlow's and check out all the different patterns that they have. As usual, the description, or down in the description, a link will be down there and you can go check out all of the different varieties and color combos to make your own tasty stuff. We got rain around here yet again, so we won't be going out fishing with this video, but I'll tell you what, we will go to the test tank so you can see how all three of these bait builds work out. And I'll do you one more. I'm gonna put all three of these in a little combo package and stick it on the website so one of you nice people can snag it for your own. All right, enough talk. Let's get to the vise. First up, quarter ounce football finesse jig. Perfect application for a little rabbit action. The rabbit of choice is called Tiger Bard, which all of these are called Tiger Bard, but this is Tiger Bard Rabbit Strips Black Orange Over Tan. Looks very crawl-like, I thought. Black 210 denier flat wax nylon. Let's get a thread base down. I'm gonna go ahead and start at the front here, even though we're gonna tie on our rabbit strips, the first of them, in the back. Now since this is only a quarter ounce, don't want the claws too long, so I've got one and a half inch strips pre-cut. Take a little bit of that fur off the end just to make it easier to tie in. We're gonna tie those in right at that uh, lower collar. Love the look of this barred material. It gives so much texture and um, color variation to the builds. It just really looks cool. I'm going to go ahead and uh, whip finish four right there. That just kind of locks it in. Step two is pick a long strip, however much we need here take off a little bit just like we do for the claws and this time want to tie it in at an angle like that that'll help um, position it because we're going to wrap this around as our body material now we want to go ahead and bring it forward half hitch right there at the head we can hang our bobbin off the end now. Be great to use cross cut for this because cross cut, like this is in line with the strip, cross cut goes this way. So if you're going to wrap the cross cut, even though you're wrapping this way, the hair falls back that way. Not that big of a deal. It gives a kind of a, a relaxed look when you use that. Be a great application going this way because the the hair is going to be in line as it goes around it's going to get a little bit more poofy either way totally works make sure that you get those claws covered good to pull back the hair as you go don't need to overlap or anything can if you want but it'll mash down the hair a bit get it all the way up there and do I like to cram it in right against that head so that I don't see any of the thread underneath we'll fish it through the hair one 
two behind. Kind of pull it tight. Two or three in front. Now we can cut it. Try to get that cut right in there so that we don't have to use a whole lot of thread to cover it up. And every now and then it'll pop loose. Looks like we're okay. Some guys don't mind a bit of a collar right there. I always try to minimize it. So that looks good. Two, three, four, five. And our first two rabbit fur applications are already in hand. We've got it as a strip to make a claw and then wrapping it around the body to make for a pretty neat um, body material. As always, we will lock that in with some 210 denier, 210 denier, <sighs> with some <clears throat> water-based head cement. 210 would be the thread. This stuff is great because it can go on hair and it doesn't mat it up. If we used um, super glue for that, it has a tendency to mat up, clump up, and just look bad. Black FG30 Weed Guard. I've been putting these in with um, two-part epoxy. When I have the time to do it, I like to do that because you don't run the risk of getting any um, haze on the top of your jig head. If you don't know what I'm talking about, super glue, which we're going to use today, as it cures, it lets off a vapor, and that vapor is heavier than water, so it'll It'll cure, it'll lift off the jig head, and then it'll settle back down on the jig head. And when that happens, um, it'll leave a white, hazy mess. You get around that by putting a fan in front or behind whatever, somewhere near blowing on your jig, so that as the vapors come off, it blows away. Um, so I avoid all of that with 210. A 210 again. I cannot speak today. I avoid all of that with two-part epoxy for um, hybrid Z builds for like the website but for today since we want to see this in the water ASAP I'm gonna go ahead and use some super glue <laughs> check that out I'd say that is a pretty good start to our four ways to use rabbit a sweet little finesse jig made of one strip, actually less than one strip of this tiger barred rabbit. Awesome stuff. Next up, purple, black, over white. Gorgeous stuff. Not for a jig though. For the life of me, I cannot remember the size of this hook. It's a fly tying hook. It's got a flat eye as you can see. And what I've done with them in the past, what we are going to do today is tie up on it a drop shot fly. I cut a little strip, as you can see. A couple different ways you could do this. You could actually just flip it right over and tie it in right there, kind of pierce it through and tie it in. That would totally work and be the easiest of all. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut this hair off of the hide we're going to put it on in two different layers to give it a little bit of, I don't know, depth, a little bit of nuance. First up though, we've got to get our um, thread base down. Still using 210 denier flat wax nylon. Could use thinner here if you wanted to. My first layer is going to be way back, so you got to make sure that the thread gets back there for a nice base to work off of. So we'll pull it apart there and get it way back there. Have a light wrap just to trap it. I obviously flipped it around because this is how it would ride as a drop shot hook. It's going to be up as opposed to a normal fly hook that usually runs with the point down. Let's see if we can get it manipulated around that shaft. Shank of the hook there. There we go. That looks good. Go ahead and lock that in. Layer number two. That one worked around the hook shank as well. 
looks like I needed a little bit of extra on the bottom, so I cut just a little bit more to fill up that space. Alright, now let's move all the way forward. One more layer. Alright, last one right up at the eye. manipulated around the shaft as well. Of course you could do this with two different colors. Um, this would be the belly color, so something light and then some darker rabbit on top would look really good, but we are utilizing uh, as much as I can just one color. Actually, yeah, in all of these builds it's just one color strip uh, because the barring gives you all that variegation already, so it makes life kind of easy. Alright, once you're pleased with that coverage, just give it a little hold there. And create a little um, thread head. Just lock it in. That looks good. We'll whip finish that nice and gentle like. Four will be more than enough. Broke my thread last time. Getting all hulkified on it. And just like last time, not 210 denier. <laughs> Water-based head cement for the threads. And there she is, little drop shot fly made out of purple and black over white rabbit. Looking good. And now perhaps the most complicated build, but still really not that bad, and still only using one material. Same stuff, only this color is mahi green, black over chartreuse. Check that stuff out. Gorgeous color. I'm thinking it's going to go well on this um, 3 16 ounce freestyle using a 2 watt VMC Barbarian hook. Little uh, finesse swim jig, I think. First thing we need to do is get our rabbit strip on as an overwing. So, just to recap, we've used strips tying them in just at the end for claws, and then we use them again the second time in the second way by wrapping them around as a body. The third way we use them is cutting the material off and layering it onto a hook, in our case, for a drop shot fly. Now we're going to use a strip as an overwing or the top of a swim jig and the tail. So that hook is going to go about an inch or so into this hair that will flutter back behind it. And then this will actually be an overwing or the top of a finesse swim jig. So I measured this out, uh, kind of eyeballed it right after the head. I'll, I'll hold it there and I want it to go right in the crups of this V. So it's going to be there and then this is going to be my tail. Alright, there's where I am so whoop, <laughs> There's where I am so far and there you go. So it's going to ride hook point up that's buried inside of here. We'll tie this on last right there and then you can see all that tail material coming off the back. Cool beans. Got it loaded up in the vise. We're going to stick with good old black 210 denier flat wax nylon for this one as well. Do want to start it up here because we're definitely going to need a thread base to tie into at the end. But I want to kind of loosely cover all of this. So some loose wraps all the way, not loose as in not tight. I mean, they don't have to be right against each other. But I want to get it all the way back to here to that bend if I can. Yeah. Right about there, I think. Come up just a hair. So I'm sitting here thinking about my numbers. <sighs> You're actually getting a bonus. I guess there's five applications. This one has to do with a chip clip. 
want to take that same rabbit and kind of bring it down so that it's straight off the hide. We don't want it curved up. And then you're going to take that chip clip and you're going to clip it just like that as best as you can. If you get all the hair in there, right, and get all the hair in there, then you can cut right along that edge and all the hair is kept inside. We can then make a nice dubbing loop with this. And there you have it. Let me show you. Just like that. Make sure that you leave enough on the outside because we're going to need to grab this hair with our dubbing loop. So don't cut, don't get that leather right up against this. You got to have some there so that your dubbing loop has something to grab a hold of. Chances are we're going to have to do this at least twice because the length of that hook is fairly long and I'd like to have a nice full body, but uh, we'll find out as we go. First thing we need to do now that our hair is ready to go is make a dubbing loop. So we're going to pull this down, take my finger, bring it back up, meet where I was, come around and then circle the thread twice. So you got the dubbing loop, now you can push that dubbing loop back, that kind of locks it into place as well. I'm going to hang my dubbing loop tool off of it so I can take my thread forward. We're going to go ahead and bring it all the way to the head just to keep it out of the way. Half hitch there, bring it around. Now at this point, probably helpful to use a little bit of dubbing wax. This stuff just helps the hair kind of stick to it. Um, ra rabbit fur is pretty slick. It's not as bad as like squirrel and some others are really slick, but a little bit of extra wax never hurt anybody. We'll hang our dubbing loop tool off the end, grab our hair. Now we want to put that hair right on the inside carefully and then let it go just like that. I'm pinching hard, I'm pulling back so it stays nice and taut. And now I want to start spinning this material with my dubbing tool. There we go. See that? I can let go and give it a good spin. They want that stuff locked in there. Now it's just a matter of wrapping it around. I am going to wet my fingers and I'm going to pull that rabbit hair back so that we don't trap the hair that's on the jig head side. Otherwise we lose all that body. Pull that hair back. This is good to do anytime you do a dubbing loop like this, whether it's natural materials or ice dub or whatever. Get that material facing backwards. So as you start to apply it, turn it onto the, uh, the hook here, you can have it going the right direction. Mm, mine is not wanting to cooperate, even with a little bit of extra help, so we're going to just do the best we can, take it in, in stages, try not to overlap, there we go as much of that hair as possible. We really want it to be nice and full. Ooh, the hook is sharp. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> what the heck? <sighs> Tell you what, I don't want to push it. I'm going to go right here and we're going to do that whole process over again, but I do need to lock this in with the thread. So, almost there. Yeah, definitely going to be worth doing that again. So we got there. Let's bring our thread back. Now we can go behind, just like before, 
two behind, two in front, or three in front, whatever. That'll lock it in and carefully cut the dubbing loop or what's left of it off. Lock that in. Rinse and repeat one more time. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's pull back the hair and give us a little bit of a uh, collar to work with so that we have a bit of a platform where we can um, tie our rabbit strip into. Now we'll bring our rabbit strip around. Go ahead and take some of this hair, not much, just a little bit of this hair off the very end of the hide. I'm happy with what that looks like. So let's get it right up there and capture the edge. Get it down. Nice. And a tiny little black collar. Yeah, that's even a little bit more collar than I wanted, but uh, we're doing a dubbing loop. No chip clip this time, just with my fingers. Get it up in there, because we only need a little bit. I cut off just a tiny bit. Enough to make a little collar right there at the end. Yeah, see how it hides the threads? I just always liked my threads to be my thread to be hidden if I can get away with it at all. Now we're gonna pull this back and we're gonna keep the thread against the head as we just kinda Put a couple in there to lock it in and some small, not small, but some quick uh, minimal whip finishes right there at the end. Doesn't need much, it's a little finesse jig. Water-based head cement. Good time to use a bodkin. Kind of dip it in there, get some on the bodkin, pull that hair back, and you can use the bodkin to apply it so it doesn't get everywhere. Wouldn't hurt it if it did, but if you can avoid that, all the better. How cool is that little guy? <laughs> Look at that, those colors. Different texture with how we put it on. Looking awesome up on the collar. Definitely a little bit more work, but worth it. That is gonna look dynamite in the water. Speaking of water, now that all three of our baits are complete, the only thing left to do is check them out in the test tank. First up is the finesse craw. Let's get it all soaked up. There we go. Love how rabbit floats. Gives you that um, craw in a defensive position. Right when they put their claws up like that. Very realistic. Oof, looks good. Love this color. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very cool. Well, that one looks good. Let's check out the drop shot. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I mean, just nice little subtle look at that movement. Rabbit, the hair, I mean, it just flows so well. Mm, mm, mm. Looks like I got my knot a little sideways, hooks a little sideways, but you get the picture. 
Wow. Even panfish, crappie. I mean, you could you could throw that for just about anything. It just flows and sways, undulates in the water like that. It's like it breathes. You can see the hair just breathing. Ugh, so cool. All right, onto the swim jig. All right, let's get it wet. Look at all those bubbles, all that air. Boy, it looks good on the bottom, just like that. You could even fish this just like that. Freestyle heads, man, I love it. Chartreuse with a red eye, mmm. All right, I think it's all soaked in, so let's swim it. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Come on. Can jig it all the way back but I mean just the that's fluid movement on a nice steady retrieve maybe a little rod pump here and there Woo. yep and you kill it and that rabbit just kind of what can stick up right you can see right there it's that's where we pierced it but it'll stick up just like you see you pick it back up and keep on swimming like how thick the body is because of the way we um, dubbing looped it right yeah that looks dynamite I am covered in rabbit fur but it's okay especially when you get to see baits like that in the water well worth it it was fun using all of these different barred variations man the colors are just dynamite if you dig rabbit as much as i do i'd encourage you to go check it out guys i hope you enjoyed the journey today who knows maybe you learned something or you were just able to celebrate the skills that you already had either way it was cool using rabbit in all of these different ways Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do appreciate you watching. And until the next time, I'll see you guys in the shop.